Hey there YouTube! If you want to repair, customize or just curious to see what's inside the PlayStation 4 controller, then this video is for you. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and in this video I will fully disassemble the DualShock 4 wireless controller. I took some great close-ups on the important steps so I can show you the process in detail. I also use different methods in some places, this way you will have a few alternatives depending on what works better for you. So let's begin! I start by removing the four screws on the bottom of the controller using a small Phillips screwdriver. Next I will pop the case open. I found it easier than other methods to twist gently until the lower part of the upper case pops open. There are four clips that hold the controller together, two near the extension port on the front of the controller and one on each side of the controller. Be advised that by opening the controller you might end up breaking the side clips. I tried different methods on three different controllers and almost every time it ended up badly for the side clips. But that doesn't compromise the integrity and functionality of the controller, so I wouldn't worry so much if it happens. It's not that big of a deal and I'm really curious about this one. So if you know, please leave me a comment and tell me is this a usual thing with the PlayStation 4 controllers or am I doing something wrong? Moving forward, there are a few versions of the controller and you might see some small differences on the interior components if you have a different model, but they all work on the same principles. I disconnect the battery from the socket and then the ribbon that connects the LED and USB port to the motherboard. There are a few plastic parts that need to be unclipped and removed in order to get to the small electronic board on the bottom case. This one has one screw that holds it in place and the USB port is a tight fit, so it needs a bit of patience to be removed. There is one last screw on the controller and you will find it right here. Remove it and the plastic battery support comes off. Now I disconnect the touchpad ribbon from the motherboard, guide it through the hole and remove the interior assembly from the upper case. On the upper case is the touchpad that is quite easy to remove some silicone pads and some of the plastic buttons, also easy to remove. The thumbsticks will come right off by pulling them away from the board. When removing the left and right triggers I found it easy to use a flat screwdriver. Push the button, insert the screwdriver and twist it on both sides of the button. It can be done only by pulling on the button with your bare hands, but I feel more in control using the screwdriver. On the L1 button I use the flat screwdriver as a spacer that will make room and free the blocking pins. On the R1 button I only used my hands. Both ways worked well. The silicone membranes will come off easily just by pulling them from their place. The motherboard is held in place by two plastic pins, but in order to fully remove the motherboard I have to disconnect the vibrators. Those are soldered on the board. You can unsolder them using a soldering iron.
or cut off the wires altogether using a plier tool. The plastic conductive film is pretty sensitive, so be gentle with this one. Don't scratch it, don't bend it and don't tear it. Be patient with it and it will come off easy. The film is held in place by four plastic pins and the design of the internal plastic frame. The vibrators are held pretty well in place with double-sided adhesive tape. On the first one I used the flat screwdriver. But on the second one I managed to unstick it by pushing hard on it with my fingers. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and now you know what's inside the PlayStation 4 controller. If this video was helpful, please hit the like button. And I will make a video where you can see how I put everything back together. So when it's ready, you can find it here or you will find it in my gaming playlist here. Thank you for watching.